The 2001 Iditarod, you end up finishing 36th out of 68 teams. Uh, explain how you're feeling as you're finishing that race. Yeah, I got to know him, and uh, the very first thing I told my wife at the time was, uh, I need to see a doctor. And she uh, she just broke down crying. She knew now something's up. Cause for me, to, I mean, I want to go see a doctor. Something's up, you know. And uh, when I went and saw a doctor that day, um, he says, uh, he did some tests and whatnot, and he says, uh, you need to go to Anchorage immediately, and you need to see a specialist. He said, this is beyond me. And both of us right away, uh, well, could it be cancer? He said, no, it's not cancer, but something's going on in there. Okay, well, fine, I'm good then, right? I'm here to tell you, that's BS. <laughs> I touched my neck, and, oh, man, what is up, you know? So basically, they pulled a softball-sized tumor out of my throat. <clears> throat> Uh, a softball-sized tumor mm -hmm. out of your throat. This is how he described it. Yeah. It had wrapped around the... I mean, it basically was cutting circulation off to my brain. That's why I was having the headaches. Uh, they took the main muscle out of my right arm, and that's all the mobility I have in my arm. In my neck, I got a main artery right here. This is, um, this is pretty bad. My neck only goes so far... They told me uh, flat out that I wasn't going to make it to this whole ordeal. They caught it in the late stages, uh, and they had a big powwow with different uh, doctors and whatnot, and um, they decided, sure, we'll make an attempt at it. And, um, you know, they, I got my whole family together, and, uh, you know, I was really positive about the whole thing until the moment they opened the doors and wheeled me in for surgery. And I'll never forget... The lady, uh, anesthesiologist, says, uh, you need to tell your family goodbye. And I'm like, you know, I have been told I can't do something my whole life. I said, I'll see you guys later, you know? And I, and I went in pissed off, telling me what I can and can't do. I'm like, you know, watch this. So I... Um, you know, I did live through it. I went through that whole ordeal, and I, I don't know exactly. I was told it was eight days when I woke up from that surgery. I woke up in the fetal position in a bed, and I, I remember just opening my eyes. And it wasn't the room. It wasn't the surrounding that I was wanting to know what was going on. It was this hose that I had in my belly, and in my, I had a catheter. I'm like, who did this? What is going on? This is not right. I don't feel right. I mean, <laughs> get me out of here, right. you know? And uh, I, I mean, I, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't roll over. I couldn't do anything. I was that weak. <clears throat> you know, my family's standing right there. I remember telling them, I said, I told you I'd be back. You've said before that you believe you'll die out on the trail at some point. Well, well, why, why do you believe that? Well, I mean, that's just something that I feel... Um, That'd be, the, that'd be the way I would want to go, for one. And if I'm feeling like it's coming that time, I'm going to hook up a team. <laughs> I might not be able to stand on the back, then I might have to put me in the basket and I'll just ride down the trail. But, I mean, this is the way I want to go out, you know? And be with a smile on my face with my best friends. And uh, I'll make that happen somehow or another. I'm not going to die in a hospital. I'm not going to... I'm just not, you know? I mean, accident happens and I end up in a car wreck or something, that's one thing, but... If I know I'm naturally going and, you know, my friends, my family, they know that uh, that's why I want to go. I want to be buried in my dog sled.